talking. Well, thank you. All right, good morning and welcome to Morning Devotions with the community of St. Andrews in Glenwood, Maryland. My name is Jan Brinza and I will serve as leader today. If you are new to this service, know that you are welcome to participate fully. We are recording this service so that others can access it at a time convenient for them. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. Let us pray. Consistent God, by night and day, you summon your slumbering people. So stir us with your voice and enlighten our lives with your grace that we may give ourselves fully to Christ's call to mission and ministry. Amen. God is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? God is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? One thing have I asked of you, O God, one thing I seek, that I may dwell in your house all the days of my What's life. Up? Come here. To behold your fair beauty, O God. And seek you and to seek you in your temple. Hearken to my voice, O Most High, when I call. Have mercy on me and answer me. You speak in my heart and say, Seek my face. Your face, O God, will I seek. We are told by scripture and tradition to confront our faults. We are called to be completely honest with God who is present in us and to acknowledge our failings with humble hearts so that we experience forgiveness, both by granting forgiveness to others and by accepting the gifts of almighty God expressed in our life. <clears throat> Merciful God, you are the source of our relationships and the unlimited basis of all. Help us to recall the teachings of your prophets and saints that by means of true humility, our lives may always be refreshed and restored. And in order that we might begin life anew as co-creators with you, of every moment of our lives, we offer this acknowledgement. We recognize then in our blindness, we have lived self-centered lives. We reflect on the actions that we should have taken, but did not take. We consider the acts that we have performed that we should not have. We have been estranged from you, Heavenly Father although you appear to us in the love of friends and family. To heal that breach, let us envision ourselves as the compassionate people that we should be, whose every action is an expression of Christ within. We have been estranged from you, Heavenly Father, although you appear to us, oh, I'm sorry, I lost my place. We commit to right those wrongs we have committed to the extent they can be corrected. We forgive ourselves of those wrongs that cannot be remedied, not in selfishness, but to free ourselves to become the people we can be. To everyone who has wronged us, we forgive and forget their faults. We put aside our injuries and any desire for redress. We accept unconditional forgiveness from our loving God, and we give it freely to all whom we encounter. For no one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us. For God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God. The boundless is our home and strength. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved, though the mountains are carried into the midst of the sea. God is a river in which every stream is joined. God in our midst, God is in our midst and shall not be moved. People rage. Their kingdoms are destroyed, but when we open ourselves to the divine unity, all that is earth 
earthly melts away. Come, behold the works of the immeasurable. Then our conflict shall cease and our weapons will be broken. Be still and know that I am God. Glory to God, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we'll continue this morning with the reading of Paul's first letter. Jan. Yeah. If you click on the text, if you put your cursor on the text and click, see if it doesn't get rid of that header thing there it darkened it the the print had gotten very light because yeah were, i know i don't know why that happened you were okay well, you thank were, you That's yeah cool. you just had to get out a header footer okay thanks oh thank you <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> all right so we're continuing this morning with uh the first letter to the thessalonians paul's first letter uh we're on chapter four verses one through five for this morning so the first time we read through this passage together, we will think about um, a word or phrase that um, feels personal to us or kind of hits us and draws our attention. Finally, brothers and sisters, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus that as you learn from us how you ought to live, and to please God, as in fact you are doing, you should do so more and more, for you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from fornication, that each one of you knows how to control your own body in holiness and honor, not with lustful passion like the Gentiles who do not know God. So what word or phrase jumps out at you this morning? <laughs> urge, urge you. What was, uh, I'm sorry, what was that, Martha? Urge you. Urge you, we urge you. <laughs> All right. Control your own body in holiness and honor. This is the will of God, your sanctification. So when I first read this, before I even put it into the document that I'm sharing this morning, um, sanctification really kind of caught my eye and I realized I um, wasn't really sure what that meant. So I looked it up and in case um, anyone else wants to hear what I found um, about the word sanctification. I wrote this down. Um, I found that it is, uh, the definition is set apart for a special purpose. A change brought about by God in a believer. Begin at the point of salvation and continuing throughout the life of the believer. A complete holiness maybe in heaven only. So the, the, that's the definition that I found for sanctification. So that, that word kind of stuck out with me. Robert, do you wanna um, provide any background of the reading before we read it again? Sure. Um, this is kind of the opening part of the uh, next major, the, the last major pieces of uh, Paul's letter. Um, the uh, uh, word finally is a transitional word that, that Paul uses. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean this is the last paragraph uh, of his letter. It just means uh, these are, are kind of the ending exhortations uh, that that he has in mind. Um, again, he's, he's reminding his uh, hearers of the letter, the readers of the letter, uh, that what he's saying, what he and his, his um, Sylvanus and Timothy are saying is coming not from them, but is coming from uh, Jesus. It is the word of God that they're transferring to them. Um, and he is he, he is not indicting the Thessalonian church for, for bad behavior or bad morality here. 
because uh, he, he has praised them already, said that they're an example to other churches in Macedonia and, and Achaia. Um, and he, he says again here, as in fact you are doing, so he's, he's acknowledging that they're, they're living uh, into what it is that God is calling them to live into, but he is reminding them that there are specific ways of life. Uh, one of the things that I found interesting is uh, that you, you, you never know what words the translators are choosing. <laughs> so the actual Greek verb uh, that is translated here as to live is uh, the verb to walk. So uh, the translators have, have shifted that throughout the, the next 10 to 12 verses to live or to be or to, you know, instead of uh, using a, a, a phrase that would have worked well in Greek times, uh, which, which translates as how you live out your life, but, but as to walk, they, they've chosen to, to put a different verb in there. Um, no one obviously uh, chose to, to choose the word fornication as jumping out at them, although I bet it jumped out to everyone who is, is listening here. Um, it's, a, it, it's a complex way in which uh, this, this is put together. Um, and and uh, the words that, that the actual Greek words that are used uh, can be translated as, as uh, control of wives. It can be translated literally as, as vessels. Um, how you control your own body could, could be con construed as how you uh, control your wife. So um, it's, you know, it's again, it's interesting how we, we come together to, to find a final uh, trust. The last uh, phrase here, uh, or the last part, not with lustful passions like the Gentiles who do not know God. These are, are two very common uh, ways in which the Jewish Hebrew people differentiate and label themselves as not Gentiles. Uh, they, they kind of say, all the Gentiles are promiscuous and, and you know, don't, don't adhere to any uh, sexual morality, and none of them know God. Uh, and so, of course, Gentiles wouldn't be expected to know God because uh, they, they are not immersed in the revealed word of God, which comes uh, specifically to the, the Jewish and Hebrew people. So um, we'll get to the additional exhortations uh, that Paul has in this passage tomorrow. I just broke this here which is kind of a difficult break place, but um, there you go. Thank you, Robert. All right, as we um, read through the passage for the second time, um, I know we've talked about how this, how passages can affect the community. I like to think about how I'm going to uh, live my day or week with the reading that um, we have in the mornings. So whatever you would like to pick out for your, um, for your own meaning to move forward with today or for the community. You can share that after the second reading. Finally, brothers and sisters, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus that as you learn from us how you ought to live and to please God, as in fact you are doing, you should do so more and more. <clears throat> for you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from fornication, that each one of you knows how to control your own body in holiness and honor, not with lustful passion, like the Gentiles who do not know God, Well, to me, it brings to mind what a gift my body is. It's such a complicated and wonderful thing that all these parts of it work together. And um, it's the only way that I can know God. I can only know God through my own body. 
So uh, I guess I need to be grateful, uh, be more grateful for it today. I'll be more grateful for my body. And to go um, along in that vein, Susan, I, I kind of thought that um, controlling your own body, like you mentioned in, after the first reading, um, controlling our own bodies and holiness and honor, uh, that, that can go pretty far. Um, our bodies, our minds, we, we do have control over our bodies and minds for the most part. So I think that's an important piece that I'm gonna take with me. I think I connect with the idea of, of what you learned from us, how to live and please God, you should do some more and more. So um, I have some knowledge, some revealed truth about how to live and what is pleasing to God. And I, I just need to live into that more and more. Put away the, the things that are not pleasing to God and to uh, try to focus more and more on the things that are pleasing to God. Which I'm fervently hoping that eating chocolate is pleasing to God. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think that us getting together in the mornings and reading, reading his word is, uh, is pleasing to God too. Anyone else wanna share? All right, let's see. So I forgot who's volunteer one, Susan? Me, me, I'd like to do the second one, the second oh. reading. All righty. The, the second third, reading. The third the, song. Oh, the second the reading, not the second song. It's, Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Uh, arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over you, the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open by day or night. They will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no longer be heard in your land, ruined or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night, you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will, and God, your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, mm -hmm. is now and will be forever. Amen. Let us affirm our faith. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Oh God, your spirit of wisdom was present at the creation and with Jesus at his baptism. Open our hearts to that same spirit and strengthen and guide us to love and serve you and our neighbors through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
Jesus, you are the light of the world. May your light open our eyes to see those in need. Jesus, you are the light of the world. May the works of our lives demonstrate your love. Jesus, you are the light of the world. May your wisdom enlighten our decisions. Jesus, you are the light of the world. Hear the prayers of our heart. Anyone have intercessions or thanksgivings this morning? For McKenna and Jim. For all those suffering from COVID and those who care for them. For those who are driving today. As you enlighten our lives, may we be light for others. Almighty God, kindle, we pray, in every heart, the true love of peace, and guide with your wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquility, your dominion may increase until the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray as our Savior Jesus has taught us. Unfathomable God, ground of our being, we hallow the names we give you. Open our hearts to your kingdom. Teach us to be thankful for our daily bread. Help us to learn that we live in forgiveness to the extent that we forgive and deliver us from self-centered existence. For only by living in compassion and freedom from selfishness, may we experience your kingdom, your power, and your glory. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>